Um, I'm a wife and a mom. I've been married for 35 years and I have two adult daughters that I love. Um, one is an ER nurse and the other um, is kind of a lifestyle blogger artist. And I've been a high school school psychologist for 30 years, a little more than 30 years. I work with kids, um, all kinds of different situations, um, substance abuse, domestic violence, family issues. Um, and I help them um, either come to terms with or get services or get connected. So I've been doing that for a really long time. Um, I think my most important role or how I see myself is as a wife and mother. Um, that infuses everything I do. I don't think of myself um, as being defined by cancer. I hear people say that. I don't really know what that means. Cancer is just part of who I am. Um, it's certainly not a gift. I would rather not be in the club, but um, it's not a focus of my life in that sense. I, I would say because of cancer, I'm pretty motivated to uh, help facilitate research because I don't think it will save my life, but I have two daughters, and I think that you know if I could do anything possible um, for my kids, your kids, everybody's kids, in the future, I, I'd be willing to do anything. I've been through a lot, so I mean, I've been through probably more than most people because of my um, particular kind of cancer. So I mean, I've kind of been there, done that, seen it all. Um, I'm one of three sisters that were diagnosed with breast cancer within a two year period, although we don't have the BRCA gene. We don't test positive for any gene that they know of as yet. And um, I watched my oldest sister die uh, the year I was just finishing my initial treatment. She died at home in my parents' living room of NBC. And at that time, going back to like 2002, 2003, when my sister died, they didn't have the language to talk about it. I mean, no one ever said to her, you're stage four, you're metastatic. Um, they just never talked about it in those terms. I mean, we all thought, oh, she has the cancers in her liver now. She's going to take some medication and they're going to cure it. And, oh, gee, it's in her brain now. We'll do some radiation. I mean, it just didn't really occur to us that this was a terminal um, disease and that she was going to die so quickly. I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer in uh, actually June 21st, my husband's birthday, June 21st of 2002. And I had a year of intense treatment, both um, surgery, uh, I had a lumpectomy, an ancillary node dissection. Um, I did a long period of chemotherapy. Um, and then I had radiation for seven weeks. I had a 13-year remission, and then I was having really terrible back pain, and I knew from way back that I had spinal stenosis and this thing called spongiolitis, which is kind of like a slipped disc, and I was getting um, cortisone injections for about a year, and they stopped working, and my back really was killing me. And I finally said, well, I got, I got to go in and find out what this is about. So I called my back surgeon, and he said, oh, get an MRI, and then come in and see me, and we'll take a look at your spine. So I went in, and I went by myself. I mean, I didn't have any personal concern at the, I mean, I just thought we were going to go in and talk about my back. So I didn't bring anybody with me, and he said, you know, you have all these problems, X, Y, and Z, and there's a compressed root nerve, and that's why you're having weakness in your legs. So we think you should have a spinal fusion and a laminectomy. And by the way, there's this other thing over here by your kidney. I, I, I don't really know what that is. So you should really talk to your oncologist about that. So it was in, they were in the same hospital. So I called my oncologist, and he had me come in for a CAT scan. And I was, again, my level of worry wasn't great. I mean, I had been in remission for 13 years. I really wasn't too concerned. So again, I went by myself. I didn't bring anybody. And um, he flung the door open and came flying in with his coat open. And he said, um, you have, I'm pretty sure it's cancer. And 
uh, I had a tumor in my perine para, para, I can't say the word, um, and it was pressing on the, my ureter and had cut off the supply so that my right kidney had atrophied and kind of died. So they did a, um, uh, a biopsy and it came back positive for breast cancer and I had been ER positive before and this indicated that it was still ER positive, which is important because that dictates what treatment you get. Um, so that kind of blew my mind that I had a tumor and so they sent me for a PET scan and found that I had cancer in my liver and in the nodes around the base of my spine and I went and saw a renal specialist to see if he could stent my bladder, um, my kidney, and that wasn't a possibility. The kidney was just absolutely shriveled and dead and black, and I lost all function. So that was my introduction to, gee, you have metastatic breast cancer. It's terminal, it's stage four. So I went home with that knowledge and the same as the first time I was diagnosed with cancer, the worst part is between getting the diagnosis and having a treatment plan set up, it's like free falling. You don't, I mean just your world falls apart and you're alone in the dark and you're crying and you're thinking like, how did this happen? How did I get here? What I, I don't know. So that was a terrible, terrible time and having to tell my family. Um, my parents had my parents had died a couple of years before that, and I my thought was I felt relief that they weren't going to have to see another daughter die, that they weren't going to have to go through that whole thing again. So I was kind of glad about that. So um, that was a relief. But then I had to tell, think in my mind, how am I going to tell people about this? And so I got this idea. Um, I mean, out of nowhere, that I would write a blog, and in the blog, I would really be addressing my daughters, and I would tell them stories about my life that I might not ever get a chance to tell them. So the whole purpose of the blog was for an audience of two. And um, I wrote a blog on March 11th, 2015, and told, basically told the, the history of me and what had happened, and that I now was metastatic. And that was sort of the beginning of living kind of a more open life and thinking a lot about what I wanted to do in the time I had left. Um, my husband reacted, I mean he's like my support and we jokingly call him blanket because when I'm really anxious he has to sit next to me and he's sort of like the soothing blanket in my life. I mean, for a while there, I couldn't eat unless he was sitting next to me because my anxiety was through the roof. And if I didn't have his comfort, it would, it would be impossible. So anyway, we jokingly call him Tim Blanket. And he, he was just incredibly supportive. I mean, his mother had died of cancer when she was 55. So I mean, he was just so supportive. Uh, my kids, they reacted really differently. Um, my youngest, Bridget, is just this ball of light and she's so positive about everything she just couldn't she would never for a minute think that I was gonna die I mean she just you're gonna make it um, and my other daughter is an ER nurse so she's a lot more realistic and more grounded in the reality medically of what that kind of a diagnosis would mean so she was really devastated and quiet whereas Bridget was loud So when I was re when I was diagnosed MBC with my recurrence, I um, you know they still thought I was ER positive, so I was treated that way, of course. And then I had a scan and I had progression, so they decided to put me on another type of chemotherapy injections, and I didn't do that for very long before I had another scan and still had progression. So my doctor said, you know, we really should do another update your liver biopsy because so we've tried two lines of treatment and nothing's working. So we did a liver biopsy and I had mutated from ER positive to triple negative, which is a different ball game.
my kids, my husband, obviously, but my kids, I mean, my husband will be okay, but my kids will be uh, devastated, rocked. And they've had to deal with my having cancer for a really long period of time because I was initially diagnosed in 2002 and now it's 2018. So they, during their formative years, they got to watch my sister die and me go through treatment and then have a 13 year remission where everyone kind of breathed. And then um, I had the recurrence. So I mean, they've, their life is very much infused in the cancer world and they have been exposed to and seen things that kids shouldn't really see or know about.